Let me show you how to remove the ski slope in an Aston Martin DB9. In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to remove the front center console section of uh, my 2005 Aston Martin DB9. So if we have a look up here, um, I have a, uh, a curving, you know, they call this the ski slope. Um, and so this is a wood uh, covered veneer dash panel. And I have the GPS screen that pops up here. So there are, there's uh, piano black versions of this, different woods and things like that. So you might be needing to remove this panel for a bunch of reasons. You might be wanting to work on your infotainment system. The GPS nav gears tend to break, uh, so you might need to get in behind there. Uh, you might be wanting to fit a complete infotainment system upgrade like I'm doing. Um, that'll be in a different video. Um, or you might be trying to replace these original buttons with the crystal glass buttons that you might be able to, to get. So it, it's all the same process though. We need to get this um, ski slope panel off without damaging any of the surrounding leather or the center stack for the infotainment system. So the process only takes a couple of minutes, uh, but you have to know how to do it right because if you do it wrong, you're going to break some expensive stuff. So let's go over to the bench and we can talk about the tools we're going to need first. So the tools you need to remove this, uh, the ski slope are really these ones. Uh, I'm going to try to do it without using any tools, so I'm just going to be using my clean hands. But depending on your car, you may need to use a trim tool. Uh, so, you know, you might need a pry tool like this, pretty typical. Or you might want to use one of these that's a non-marring one where you can slip this little thin end in and do a little wedgie twist. Um, and if you're anywhere working near leather or any of the other finishes, you may want to lay down some blue tape on the opposite finish to uh, protect it. So probably don't need those, you just need these. So let's go give it a try. So here we go with one of the potentially, it's gonna feel like the scariest thing you've ever done with your interior, because we're going to try to release this beautiful wood from all the surrounding leather and painted materials and not scratch or crack anything. Um, so there are a couple of videos on the internet already uh, Rich from Red Pants has done one that's pretty good that explains some of it. Um, his car was uh, didn't have all the buttons. It was a standard. Um, and then there's some hillbilly kind of guy that just goes at it with pry tools and does it entirely the wrong way. So that's why I'm doing this video is I want to show you the process um, on how to do it. I've had some advice from uh, James at Aston Installations who's taken hundreds of these off over the years. So I'm pretty sure this is probably the best way to do it. So first up, we're gonna get the nav screen opened up. Now there are a few cars that don't have nav screens um, and you're gonna to have to just sort of adapt the process, but I'm gonna basically get the nav screen to um, pop up here. So the nav screen on the early cars is really easy to separate the screen from the, the ski slope cover. On the sides, there are literally just this little plastic with that little tab, round tab there. And if I undo the one on the opposite side here, that's it. <laughs> Two thumbnails um, and you're done. Now later model cars have a different process. So Let's cut away real quick and talk to James out in the UK and ask him how to do one of those. So for the start of the installation, how I like to start is starting with a HD screen. First thing to do is remove the ski slope. Before getting started, it's worth noting if there's any damage to the ski slope, these can be brittle and quite a known fault for them to crack from the corner of the screens and sometimes elsewhere on the panel due to sunlight damage and some being veneered wood. So just take note of any damage before starting. Another thing is to push away the wings to allow the release between the lever and the ski slope if it's not been removed before. 
So first things first, we have to remove the spring clips from the door, from the opening door for the screen. On early models, it'll have clips from the side, which are easily pryable to left and right. In this model, we have spring clips. So if you open the door, you'll see that the spring clip is holding the panel in place. Simply slide the left one to the left and the right to the right. This will then release the door. The next step, I would suggest using a flat scraper or something very similar. Find the gap between the ski slope and the centre console and slowly pry until you can feel this clip released. I then move to the other side and now the front is released. The next step I would use is a bent tool to allow yourself to get in between the grill and the ski slope like so. Sometimes a wiggle of the front end can allow a gap to be made for the tool at the back. When you can get a tool in the back, pry to release the two spring clips. Now the ski slope is released. You can lift out ever so slightly. I like to pivot using the top to allow you to access the plugs. This being a manual, there's only a plug for the key dock. Well, two plugs for the key dock. In, in the situation of it being a sport shift, you'll have the PRND buttons. Same again, unclip them, and then you can release the ski slope cover. That will then give you access to the screen. As you can see, there's four Phillips holding the screen in place. These will require removal along with the original plugs to the screen. All right, the beauty of Zoom. So back to my car. Um, now I'm gonna actually shut the, the, the nav screen off, but now the cover is gonna stay up, which is great. So <laughs> the next thing to talk about, and I'm gonna turn the key off to, so all the power's off to here, is that this is held on by four clips, one here, one here, one around here, one around here. The clips are not perpendicular to the cover surface. They are designed for the whole cover to come out this way. They're actually mounted on angles underneath. So if you're trying to pry up, you're making a mistake because you're fighting against the sideways motion of the clip. So what James had shared with me is it might be a good way is you know you can potentially get your hand under here and when you do you can actually see over here where my left finger is pointing you get a little flex up so i'm hoping and i'm pulling up and forward towards me a bit now this little catch and kind of resist but i'm getting a little working space and i'm hoping either the back clips or this front corner one is going to come loose there we go so this back corner just came loose I'm going to try the same over on this side. Okay, so my, you can see my front has come loose now. And I got one more clip holding here, and there we go. So, no tools at all. Um, so I haven't scratched anything, I haven't pried anything. I've just had to, you know, be brave enough to pull uh, medium strength to get these to start to release. And once you do, you can start to get in behind here now. And I'm just gonna assume cameraman Rob's got the shot. And we have all these electrical connectors for the buttons. So I'm just, they're just to squeeze the tab at the top and wiggle it off. I'm doing this for the first time ever, completely blind. Not sure how this one goes yet, but I'll get the reverse park. And then hopefully I can. <coughs> and there's the starter one. So there we have it. <coughs> we can see the totally dead foam sealant around the <laughs> uh, my vents, which I'll probably end up finding 
a replacement uh, foam for that. And, you know, there's my nav cover. You can see my wood is deteriorating here, and this is actually why I'm taking my ski slope off, is so I can ship this away uh, to be repaired. Uh, you might be wanting to get underneath here to access the nav screen, um, and now you can get to the bolts that the nav screen is held in with, and I'm, I'm doing an Aston Installations HD upgrade, so I'll be working on that. And you can also see some of these orange cables to the side here. These are the fiber optic communication cables for the stereo system. So you might be wanting to get into to here to start to access some of the electronics for the head unit. So anyways, um, mission accomplished. Well, that's it for now. Um, ski slope removed, cover removed, um, and you can move on with the rest of your project. Down here, you'll probably find a link to my companion blog that may have some additional information on maybe where to get the foam replacement, things like that. Uh, up here, I'll have certainly the next video in the series relating to you know the center console removal or the stereo install. Uh, please subscribe and you get automatically notified when I come out with new videos. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.